Welcome to the Cool Beer Can Bar. Here we check out the artwork found on craft beer cans. We taste the beer too. We'll see a four pack mix. Today's theme is about paintings originally made for a wall that ended up on a can. Squirrel man chilling on the bench with some pigeons. This image is weird and striking. What's going on here? The beer is called Life in the Clouds by Collective Arts Brewing in Toronto. This piece is from a street artist named Sean Nine Lugo. Sean is known for portraits where he replaces human faces with animal faces. I reached out to Sean and he told me that this painting is based on a friend's photo of Paul the Birdman, a personality in New York City's Washington Square Park. We tasted it. It pours thick and cloudy. It tastes unusually mellow for a hazy IPA. It has a creamy mouthfeel, some piney citrus up front, and we found the bitter finish to be very restrained. Sean has done portraits of public figures, of people he met, and he also had a recent gallery show about the lives of immigrants. You can spot his work wheat pasted on the walls around Philadelphia, and you can find him on Instagram. I'll put the links below. All right, next up, Duchess Ailes of New York brings us an abstract oil painting. I dug up the original painting so we could take a closer look. It's soft and delicate, and it reminds me of something floral or fruity, like the inside of a peach. Anyway, we tasted it. It was smooth and light. My friend Kimberly called it a ballpark beer, good for a sunny day. There was some nuance. I faintly noticed the apricot and floral tastes as described. The painting is by Crispin Duar. I couldn't find out much about the artist. He has an Instagram with his oil paint sketches, but all are in a different style than we see here. Looks like he is a personal friend of the brewers, Tim and Mike. They are two Brits that claim to have mixed American and British traditions to create this modern IPA. This beer was lovely. I had to try another. Also from Duchess Ales, this is GB, which stands for Ghost Beer. I was excited to try this, so let's get right to that. There was a brightness, which I'll call green grape. And mixed with that, I got some malty hops, like pumpernickel bread. It was not very bitter. It was crisp and very easy to drink. The art on this can is by Andrew Tarlow. He is a restaurateur here in Brooklyn. The story is he wanted a Colch-like beer to serve his customers, and he was friends with the brewers, so voila. Before he opened his first restaurant, Andrew was trying to make his way as an artist. Take a look at his work here. You can see the style reflected on the can. This is a fairly simple piece, but the colors really make it stand out. The pink background with the green and blue foreground is unusual and works well. These two just checked all the boxes for me. I find it charming that this small brewery puts their friend's artwork on their cans, and I loved both the beers. Somehow they are both original, yet classic at the same time. All right, so far we've seen abstract art, we've had street art. Now Westkill Brewing brings us a landscape watercolor painting. The artwork fills the entire front of the can. Westkill Brewing is located on a dairy farm in the Hudson Valley. There's quite a scene of small farm breweries up there. We tasted it. It smelled and tasted of citrus. I got lemon and grapefruit. There was mild carbonation, a little bit of grassy bitterness. Very nice. The theme today is wall art on cans, but turns out the unintended tasting theme is easy drinkers. The artist is Steven Weinberg. He wrote about his painting. It's of the area's historic vista, Catterskill Falls. Artists have been painting it for hundreds of years. On the bottom of the can is stamped Protect the Clove, referring to Catterskill Clove, a valley at the base of the falls. One thing I did notice is that while the green colors on the painting are flat, the brown colors have a metallic shimmer. That part looks like gold nail polish and seems strange on a watercolor painting. They might not have been shooting for something postmodern, but it looks cool. Sometimes in art, you have a happy mistake. That's it for now. Don't forget to click on the stuff. And if you like this, you should check out my other YouTube channels. I have one for games and I'm working on some history stuff. I put it up on the screen. Goodbye for now.
See you next time.